melting whale. We've got to get to Nashville. Yes, it's really quite a spot. You're going to like old Nashville. I still don't feel so hot. It's, it's January, January time. January time. I can hardly wait to meet up with the crowd. It's, it's January time. January time. Come on, let me hear it clear and loud. We're on our way. We're on our way. We're on our way to a swinging jamboree. Okay. Sorry you got caught in the middle. What's going on? Spies. Spies? That's right. Over in Acme City and these hills. They're all over the place. Let's get out of here. Jeepers, you have to relax. You're headed for a nervous breakdown if you don't unwind a little bit. Well, don't worry, ma'am. They won't bother you unless you carry some secrets in this guitar. You entertainers? Yes, sir. We're on our way to Nashville. We're doing a jamboree there. Well, good luck. Thank you. The road's clear. You can pass on. Thank you. Woody, we have to do something about Jeepers. Yeah, I know. He's been working night and day, and I think his nerves are on edge. Jeeps. What? Now, Jeepers, you know we appreciate what you've done for us. We sure do, Jeeps. And I realize you worked awfully hard to try to get the show lined up so we could appear back in Nashville. That's right. And the show is until tomorrow night. Right. And Woody and I are going to find a nice, quiet, restful place for you. We'll see that you relax. Yeah, relax. That's what Jeepers means, relax. Hi. Thought this place is closed. Well, it should be. Nobody ever comes this way. Where are we? Sleepy Junction. Sleepy Junction. Where are we? Sleepy Junction. Oh. Hey, Woody, we're in Sleepy Junction. Sir, we're looking for a nice, quiet place to spend the night. A motel. Nope. A hotel. Nope. A boarding house? Ma'am, there just ain't nothing around here. What happened to this place? Everybody moved out. Moved over to Acme City. They got a big missile plant there, and the people go where the work is. Jeeps, I'm sorry, buddy, but we'll find a place for you so you can rest and relax. Oh, that's OK. I feel good now. I'm not nervous or anything. Thunder? Thunder. Yeah, it looks like a storm's coming up. It don't look too good, does it? Hey, I just thought of something. There's the old Beauregard Mansion. Oh, it's quiet, all right. At least you'd get out of the rain and have a place to stay. Well, where is it? Just follow this road. Thank you. Hey, wait! I forgot to tell him it's haunted. Hurry up, 
off. That rain's gonna be coming down any minute. Wait, listen, listen. Jeepers, come on. You're not afraid, are you? Oh, no. Well, come on. What are you two waiting for? I'm waiting for my courage to come back. Come on, let's go. I think my courage just left again. Oh, jeepers, it's just a shutter that fell. I don't like this place one little bit. <laughs> I said put that monkey back in the cage. All right, all right. I want him to stay in the cage. If he comes out once more, once more, I'll kill him. Oh, Anatole, you get in there. Be a good boy. Be a good boy. Be quiet. You shouldn't talk to Anatole like that. He's sensitive. <laughs> Stay away from that monkey. Well, it's not exactly a Hilton hotel. Let's go get the television set. This store of fire, huh? Okay. Hey, I put the top up on the car, but I know it don't work. <laughs> hey, this is kind of fun, you know? Sort of like camping out. I'd like to explore this place once we get settled down. Something out there. What? Calm down, boy. Listen, I saw a, a, a thing out there. Jeepers, you're a nervous wreck. Now you're seeing things. I am? Boy, you're in bad shape. What you need is to relax. I want you to know, Jeeps, no matter what happens, that you've been one of the best little business managers anybody could have. But you need to unwind. Come over here and sit down in this comfortable chair and just relax, man. That's what I get. I gotta relax. Sing him a song, Woody. That always relaxes him. All right. Jeeps, this is one I was telling you about I wrote the other day. Called, uh, what was the name of it? Oh, Living in a Trance. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah let me get in here. You cast a spell on me the first time we met. Bewitched. And enchanted at first glance I didn't know then The spell that I was in Now I'm living in a trance Living in a trance In a world of love Baby. Is he asleep or is he hypnotized? <laughs> <laughs> Who's there? 
Wait a minute, I'll see who it is. Who's there? Come on, speak up. Who is it? Nobody. Well, come on in then. You a ghost? <laughs> Not yet, but you darn near scared the life out of us. Me too. What are you doing here? We were just passing by. We thought we heard guitar music coming from this place. Oh, that was me. You live around here? Just over the hill. We figured if it was a ghost, must be friendly if it plays a guitar. What made you think it was a ghost? Because this place is haunted. Nobody comes near here. Well, we've been here for quite a while and nothing has happened. <laughs> You're one of the lucky ones. Oh, I don't think nothing will happen. Come on in, warm yourselves with the fire. Okay. Yep, there's all kinds of strange lights and strange sounds always coming on around this place. Somebody comes in to see if they're real, leaving just like that. Well, let's leave, just like that. Oh, jeepers, don't be a baby. We haven't heard a thing. Say, aren't you Woody Weatherby? I'm guilty. I knew it. He's a big star. Thank you very much. I'm proud you heard of me. This is Boots Malone. Hi. And my manager, Jeeps. Heard of you folks, too. We plan to sing a little. How about singing one for us? We'd like to. I feel like we're auditioning an act. You never know where you'll find good singers. There is one song that we sang about this mansion, an old tomcat, one of the ghosts here. Years ago, this song was made famous in these parts. John had troubles of his own, had an old yellow cat that wouldn't leave home. He tried everything he knew to keep the cat away, he even gave it to a preacher and he told him for it to stay. But the cat came back, the cat came back. I thought he was a goner, but the cat came back cause he wouldn't stay away. He gave the old cat to the man in a balloon. He told him to leave him with the man in the moon. The balloon it busted and everybody said, ten miles away to pick the man up dead. But the cat came back, the cat came back. I thought he was a corner, but the cat came back cause he wouldn't stay away. Now the cat was a terror and they thought it was best To give him to a fellow who was heading out west The train went around the corner and it hit a broken rail Not a soul aboard the train lived to tell the tale But the cat came back, the cat came back I thought it was a corner but the cat came back Cause he wouldn't stay away Now the farmer on the corner's gonna kill a cat at sight He loaded up his gun full of nails and dynamite Well, he waited in the garden till the cat came around Seven little pieces of the man was all they found But the cat came back, the cat came back I thought he was a corner, but the cat came back Cause he wouldn't stay away Love songs? Sometimes. Would you sing one tonight? The minute you're gone, I cry. The minute you're gone, I die. Before you walked out of sight, I'm like a child all alone at night. I stare into emptiness.
Maybe it's mass hypnotism. That's hypnotism. That's what I said. Maybe we all been working too hard. Well, I for one do not believe in ghosts, and I think we ought to investigate. Isn't anyone coming with me? Are you sure you saw it? I, I think so. Oh, I don't know. I heard a sound, and I was so frightened. Look, maybe we'd better get out of here while we can. It could have been my imagination. Boy, between the three of us, there's sure a lot of imaginating going on. For sure, there's something funny about this house. Well, I don't think it's so funny. And I'm not laughing at all. Well, maybe it's an owl. An owl? Doing what? Dragging a chain to his nest? Look, I do not believe in ghosts. And there must be some explanation for all of this. Where are you going? To continue the search. Look, Boots, this is an old empty house. I know there may be a few ghosts in here, but I think we've searched long enough. I think we ought to get out of here myself. I'm with you. I saw a, uh, uh... What? What? I don't know what it was. Oh, I'll go check the car. Come on. Poor jeepers. This isn't a very relaxing place for you, is it? No. My dear Dr. Himmel, we have more important things to settle than your concern with that monkey. It infuriates me. Of course it does. But we have little choice in the matter. I knew from the beginning that it was a mistake. That was not your decision to make. Maximilian is my man. Yes, of which you so consistently remind us. From the moment we began this project. You forget that I am the contact with Dr. Fu. Without me... Without you, we might be much safer. Indeed, we might. You've been warned again and again to use the secret entrance, yet tonight you walked right into the house as if you were some neighbor on a social jaunt. I saw a strange car, and I decided to make an investigation. Such foolish investigation endangers the whole project. No matter what your authority, you've no right to take such risks, especially since we're so close to achieving our goal. You know perfectly well 
But we often have visitors who are curious to discover if this is really a haunted house. The simple fact is that if you had contacted us by radio, we could have notified you of our visitors. What is done is done. So we're no longer safe. You have always known this was not a safe business to be in. But tonight is our last night. It's foolish to endanger the entire project. <laughs> Don't worry. Everything's going to be all right. Bad news. Why? What happened? Car won't start. Oh, no. Oh, yippee. Well, guess we'll just spend the night here. Jeeps, you can help me build a fire up some. We'll bank it so it'll last until morning. And I think we ought to stick real close together. Good thinking. And Boots, I want you to... Boots? Boots? Boots! Oh, boys, here I am. Come and see what I found. Where are you? What do you mean, running off? Oh, well, it's just down this hall. Well, we've got to stick together. Yeah, we got to stick together. I'm sorry. We don't know what's going on in this house, and anything can happen. Okay. Come on and see what I found. When I open this door, you won't believe what's inside. By now, I'd believe anything. You're right. I don't believe it. Isn't it beautiful? Oh, I could spend forever right in this one little room. It's so elegant. Maybe this is the room of the great lady of the house that's been kept exactly as she left it, way back in the Civil War days, when she was a, a southern belle. Gowns, gowns, beautiful gowns, satin and lace from across
to get out of here. Oh, but it's so beautiful. I could stay here forever. Well, let's go. Yes, Madam Wong. There are three of them. What beautiful trespasses. Uh, who are you? I'm Woody Weatherby. Boots Malone and Jeepers. Delighted. Now, uh, tell me, what are you doing in my house? Oh, we didn't know it was your house. I bought the Borogat Mansion so that I could restore it to its original beauty. Oh, we didn't mean to trespass. Oh, never mind. Just tell me, what are you doing here? Well, it looked like a storm was coming up. And we needed a place to stay. Come, let us leave this room. Of course you cannot stay here. Haven't my ghost bothered you? Well... Are they real ghosts? Of course they are. I told you we should have gotten out of here. Ma'am? If you just let us spend the night. You see, we're entertainers, and we're on our way to Nashville, Tennessee, to do a jamboree there. I'm afraid our car won't start. And, uh, well, we're going to have to wait until morning. Uh, tell me, uh, what kind of entertaining do you do? I'm a singer, and I pick a guitar. How charming. And, uh, what do you do, my dear? I sing and dance. Nice, nice. Are you an entertainer? Uh, not exactly. What are you exactly? I are exactly his business manager. What's going on? I don't know, but it looks phony. You seem real nice to me. I have decided that uh, you may stay, at least for tonight. Well, fine. But let me warn you. Stay in that room. You'll be much safer. We'll stay right by the fireplace. Good. We sure do. Hey, they've gone. Where'd they go? They didn't go out that door. Think maybe she was a ghost, too? She sure seemed real to me. Well, anyway, she was nice, letting us stay here and all tonight. Well, let's settle down and try to get some rest. heaven's sake. Well, let us sleep anyway. We're crying out loud, Jeeps. Watch TV or something. Yes, sir, ladies and gentlemen, for a terrific car buy, hurry on down right now to Acme City Sales. And now for a full hour of country and western music, here is Merle Haggard. <laughs> she with him? Did he hug and hold her tight? Or was she just out walking like she said 
down by the sea. Tell me shoes, was she stepping out on me? Oh, say their telephone, did he call here and talk to her? Did he say he'd meet her at their rendezvous? Woody, Woody, Bert. Did you hear her say she couldn't wait to be with him? Is that why she wasn't here to answer you? Hi there, pretty dress. Are you the one that she would choose? When I called here, were you out with one or with two? Did he put his arms around you as he held her tenderly? Tell me, dress, was she stepping out? Woody, wake up. Boots? Boots? What's going on? We're crying out loud, Jeeps. Look at the TV. Look at the television. That's very nice, Jeepers. Yeah, he picks a mean guitar. Now, let's go back to sleep. Oh, I saw these, these two weird faces on the television. Yeah, you're watching the Late Late Show. What Late Late Show? Listen, I saw that, that Chinese lady and her friend. Well, so did I. I mean, on the television. Jeepers. You're in bad shape. You need a long, long rest. If you don't stop seeing things, you're going to end up in the funny farm. Well, I saw something that looked like them. Now I'm hearing things. They are entertainers. Oh, really? Of course they are. You take their word unconditionally? They were carrying guitars, weren't they, Max? Yeah, two or three of them. Anyone can play a guitar. That doesn't make entertainers. In fact, it could well be a clever disguise. I believe they're from the master organization to halt enemy resistance. M. O. T. H. E. R. Right. Oh, come now. They are not mother agents. I'll take care of them. The torture wheel. The rack. <laughs> and the iron maiden. Effective, but primitive. We have other methods. Quicker and surer. No. We must not waste time eliminating three who are obviously nothing more than what they appear. Then you still think that they're entertainers? You don't want us even to question them. I thought we had resolved that problem. Then I suppose we must bow to our judgment in this matter. As long as I am in charge, you must. I wish I could be as sure of them as you are. Dr. Himmel will continue to observe them while I attempt to uh, contact headquarters. Yes? Who are you? Agent Ming Toy, 382436. Oh. Let me speak to the chief. One moment, please. Good evening, Dr. Fu. Gregor, have you the rest of the formula? No, but Maximilian is leaving almost immediately with Madame Wong. 
They're to make contact tonight with the agent of the Acme City Missile Plant, at which time they'll receive the balance of the formula. Excellent. When we receive the balance of the formula, we'll report back to you at once. I will be expecting your call. Uh, meantime, may I suggest that you have everything in readiness for the test? Of course. Well, now it's up to you. I suggest that you keep in close radio contact with us. We will. Come, Max. Anatole. <laughs> Max, don't you realize we have important business? Yeah. Gentlemen, 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 this is no time for disagreement. Max, here's your laboratory smock, your identification card, and your badge. Good luck. there. Working kind of late, aren't you? Yeah. You scientists really work hard. Yeah, that's right. Say, you're new here, aren't you? Yeah, sure. I thought so. I didn't recognize your face. What project, John? It's top secret. No comment. Oh, that's all right. I know all about them. I've been working here for five years. The things I know and the things I've heard, you wouldn't believe. I tell you one thing. If anybody wanted to be a spy, Thing to do is to become a janitor. Janitor knows everything that goes on. I ain't got time for conversation. Now let me buy, will you? Sure, sure. See, you're cleared for top secret. Yeah, that's right. Hey, that's pretty good. Of course, I'm cleared for top secret too. Janitors have to be. Well, I told you I ain't got time for conversation. Now let me buy, will you? Locked out, huh? It looks like it. That's all. Don't wait. I got the key. As long as you're cleared with security. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Glad to help. Hey, uh, ain't you forgetting something? Oh, thank you. George? Yes. Do you have the formula? Yes. Give it to me. If you'd betray your country, you'd betray us. Oh! Don't try to say anything. I'll, I'll get help for you. Yeah, 
that, Chief? This is Jim. My partner's just been shot. Yeah. You better get an ambulance over here right away. No, he hasn't said anything yet. I'll follow through. You'd better hurry. Okay, will do. Now, don't try to say anything. Oh. Take it easy. The old Beauregard mansion. is completed. Do you have the formula? Yes. That's what we've been waiting ah. for. I'll be glad to get out of this cold, damp cellar. We both need a vacation, Gregor. Mm-hmm. Florida. The Caribbean. Wait a minute. Um, Mexico? Puerto Vallarta. Ah, marvelous. Come on, let's call the chief. Just to let him know our mission was successful, and we'll be calling with the formula soon. I don't believe in ghosts. 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 Hmm. Not about that door. It looks as though he's waiting for someone. Hmm. Or he may be initiating an investigation, whatever Madam may think. Madam is not always right. Maybe making a grave mistake. I don't think they're entertainers. They're not in costume. True, quite true. Hmm. Yes? It looks like we are being followed. Can you lose them? Of course we can. <laughs> are you all right? Perhaps we should question one of our visitors. Hmm? What do you say? You awake? Awake? How do you expect me to sleep when you're roaming around half a night? Sorry about that, Chief. That's a bad sign, Jeeps. What were you talking about? I don't know. It's the first time I heard it. Well, when you figure it out, tell me all about it when I'm wide awake. I'm telling you, there's something going on in this house. Sure, sure. Well, I can't be imagining all of this. I don't know. You've been doing pretty good at it. Now, go back to sleep. I can go to sleep. You hear that? It all depends on what it sounds like. Sound like somebody moaning or something. Yeah, the wind. Oh. What's that? I don't know. Let me see. Shutters? I don't think so. Maybe nothing, huh? It may be the branches hitting up against the side of the house. Yeah. Now, that sounded like something. Imagination. No, that sounded like... Boots? She's gone. Well, don't panic. I'm not, I'm not. Don't panic. We would have heard the door by the way it squeaks. Let's try the hall. Wait a minute. For what? 
We can't forget Boots. Oh, yeah. What am I running for? I didn't say anything. Come on. That stupid gorilla. Oh, shut up! I don't pick on poor old Anatole all the time. He's not so bad. Don't you remember I said just now that we ought to question one of our visitors? Yes. Well, he must have heard us talking and he wants to help us. The only smart thing he's ever done. <laughs> Jeeps, we've got to separate. I'll go upstairs and you go outside and look around. Okay. Say, Woody. Yeah. You know, after really thinking about it for three or four seconds, don't you think we ought to stick together? You're not afraid, are you? Well, I never won any bravery contests. Why don't you take that hat off? Might be a bad look. Okay. Front was bad. And it's spooky out here. Boots? Ooh. Boots. Hey, honey. Boots, where are you? Well, she's not out here. Let's go back in. Hold it. I don't see anything. Me neither. Let's go back. Come on. They're getting too close. Then do something. Did you hear something? Must be wind. Yeah, I guess so. the ghost a little closer. All right. Jeeps, I think something's behind us. You sure? I think so. Think we ought to look? I'm almost afraid to. I'll count to three. And we'll both turn and look. One. Two. Two and a half. Three. <laughs> Come on, Jeep, hurry! Jeep! Jeep, where'd you go? Woody! Help! What are you doing down there? Well, I ain't looking for new talent. Seem thoroughly frightened. This should get rid of them once and for all. Just we're going to have to take drastic measures. Should we question the girl now? No. Let's wait. At least until Madame returns. Are you afraid of her? We are all dependent on each other in this operation. We could still question her. George, my dear friend, without Madame Wang, we get no payment for our services. I think it's imperative we wait until she returns. But we could start questioning her. I have no intention of jeopardizing our position with Madame. I suspect she'll be angry enough when she sees the young lady. It's not our fault. <laughs> I know, the gorilla. Hey, Woody. Man, I'm putting his hat back on. I wonder where she went to. Stand right where you are. I suggest you raise your hands very high. Higher. I told you to leave them alone. Nevertheless, I decided that we should question one of them. Perhaps you are right. Hmm. 
Do not scream, dear. Maximilian has a nervous finger. Perhaps you'd better answer a few questions. We don't have time to answer questions. Our girl singer is missing. How long have you been contact agents? The only agents we know get 10%. What does that mean? That means we're entertainers. Now, look, I've got to find our girl singer. Hold it. What proof do you have that you're an entertainer? My guitar? Play. Look, that girl may be in trouble. If you're an entertainer, you can play anytime. Now, go on. Perhaps you are entertainers. Oh, you mind telling me what's happening? Have you ever heard of M O T H E R? M O T H E R. That spells mother. I know Mother McCree, and some other songs about mother. Mother is master organization to halt enemy resistance. Mother. Hey, that's clever, huh? My name is Jim Meadows, mother agent number 30. We're after an organization whose sole purpose is espionage and counter-espionage. They will contact and sell to anyone. I thought you were contact agents. We wouldn't know a contact agent if we saw one. Tell me one thing. How did you get here? Well, it's a long story. Yesterday, we were driving down the highway on our way to Nashville. All right, let's begin. What's your name? Boots Malone. Boots Malone. Her name is Boots Malone. Is that all the information you got from her? That's all we had. I'll kill her. Oh, Max, shut up. It's my opinion Boots Malone is a code name. Not possible. Boots. Boots. What could that mean? I don't know. Ah, Malone. Malone. That's it. Ma is a colloquialism for mother. She's a mother agent just as we thought. Now, loan. Loan. L-O-N-E. Got it. L-1. She is mother agent L-1. What are you talking about? My mother's in Las Vegas. You leave the interrogation to us. You go make contact with headquarters, and Max, give them the formula. We have been waiting. We have the balance of the formula. Dr. Himmel will read it to you. C3, H5, radical O number three. Is that all? No, there's more. It would be much simpler if you talk. Talk? Talk about what? Four, imidazoleethylamine, beta, aminoethyldruxoline. Could you repeat that, please? We have ways of making people talk. H5, radical O number three. Four, imidazole, You have waited so long for someone. Help me, somebody! I don't belong in this dead house! I think perhaps you had better answer a few questions. All right! Did Mother send you? I told you, my mother's in Las Vegas. This is the bedroom of the lady that lives here. Nobody lives here. This place has been for sale for years. Well, there is somebody living here. Maybe it's her ghost. I'll have to see that before I believe it. That's where we saw that weird wolf over there. In that closet there. I'm gonna take a look. <laughs> Here's the 
Here's your werewolf. Come take a look. Here he is. Well, that's you're going to a lot of trouble just to scare a guy. This whole house is rigged. We gotta get out of here. Let's go find that girl. equipment on our new assignment. Well, let's start dismantling it. No, we better wait till we get a report from Dr. Fu. Mm -hmm. We should have heard from him by now. There's no need to be anxious. It'll take some time to put the formula through. There are elaborate tests to be made, and there are two parts to the formula. Could you determine what the ingredients were? No. Of course, I didn't have time to examine it carefully. But there are some strange, unusual components. Maybe something entirely new in atomic research. Hmm. Let's see. Nothing here I recognize. Let's see. Do you think maybe we should split up? Well, all right. Why don't you take upstairs? I'll take outside. What about me? Why don't you go with him? Oh, by the way, what does she look like? Blonde, blue eyes, very beautiful. You have been tricked. The formula is a fake. You gave me the formula for nitroglycerine and an antihistamine. How can that be? Are you certain? We are certain. Our contact must have been a mother agent. It is too dangerous to stay there. Move quickly to your next assignment. What about the girl? Poor Max. How you would love to dispose of the girl. The girl can identify us. We can leave her here. No one will ever find her. No one will even hear her. Help! Help! Our next assignment is in Alamogorodo. Oh, I'm looking forward to that. The dry climate will be wonderful for my sinuses. But I'll miss this house. It has been fun, hasn't it? Perhaps we could create another haunted house. No. Could we fly the ghost once more? No. Oh, just once more. We'll find something else that will be just as fulfilling. Max, go check the car. Gretchen and Dr. Hillmill will take care of the others upstairs. Come, we'll take the passageway.
wouldn't you say that was some trick? Oh, I'd say that's some trick, wouldn't I? You sure it's a trick? Well, sure it's a trick. What else could it be? Well, it could be a ghost. Uh, sure does look real, doesn't it? Yeah. Go away. You don't scare us. Leave my house. You are intruders. Leave my house. Now, if they look real enough, so do the guns. After them! A friendly face. Who are you? I'll explain later. Where'd they go? I don't know. That girl, they must be playing games again. Go stop him. This time I'll kill him. Give yourself up. Give yourself up. Leave my house. You are intruders in my house. But you're not one of ours. A ghost! A ghost! A real one! You fool! There are no ghosts! But I saw him! Ugh. Get the gun, Woody. Put the fire around and get the gun. Come on, Woody. Come on, Woody. Get over there. Face the wall, both of you. Yes, ma'am. Isn't that nice, friendly Chinese lady? Not very friendly right now. Go on. enjoyed that. I didn't like him at all. Have you intruded? You have taken my name and my house. You have disturbed the dead. When I make a promise, especially to a beautiful girl like you, I don't break it. Hmm, thank you. Mother is very grateful. Thank you. Glad we could help. You got a medal for this. Glad to help. Just mail a medal to Nashville. <laughs>
We live it up to Florida. Ladies and gentlemen, we travel. That is, uh, most of the entertainers in the country music field. I'd say better than 100,000 miles a year. A lot of shows we work, we're not lucky enough to have women on them. Tonight, we're real fortunate. Here's another beautiful blonde dressed in a beautiful blue, Marcella Wright. <laughs> Strangers, completely strangers. When we meet, you turn and look the other way. How can we be strangers, completely strangers? When we were so in love just yesterday. On the night that we met, it was true love at first sight. You held me in your arms. And your arms felt oh so right Our love seemed to blossom As the days grew into years Then you went away and filled my heart with tears And now we're strangers, completely strangers I just can't believe you take your love from me Now we're strangers, completely strangers just a memory now we're strangers completely strangers when we meet you turn and look the other way how can we be strangers completely strangers when we were so in love just yesterday when we were so in love just yesterday. Ladies and gentlemen, one of my favorite singers, and one of my favorite people, Mr. Merle Haggard. Merle? <laughs> So small till bar something I'm not used to. I gave up my home to see you satisfied. I just called to let you know where I'll be living. It's not much, but I feel welcome here inside. I've got swinging doors, a jukebox, and a bar stool. And my new home has a flashing neon sign. Stop by and see me anytime you want to. Cause I'm always here at home till closing time. Thanks to you, I'm always here till closing time. And I've got swinging doors, a deep box, and a bar stool. My new home has a flashing neon sign. Stop by and see.
Thank you very much. Now I'd like to introduce somebody to you that I've known for a few years. As a matter of fact, we worked together when she was about 11 years old out in California. She was real cute then. Now she's even more beautiful. Let's make her welcome, Miss Molly B. Stage a while ago, Cliffy Stone and myself were talking about singers and all that, and we we're trying our best to get this next fellow to sing a song. We finally talked him into it. Make him welcome the Good Jeepers. And I got into the wrong house again last night. I bought myself a house few months back and it's a darling little house that's a fact howsomever there's 37 others there just exact and would you believe I got in the wrong one again last night my neighbors got a dog about two feet high cutest little dog wouldn't hurt a fly well, I stumbled in their house by mistake this morning about five, and that cute little stupid dog nearly ate me alive. I came in last night and felt like I had two heads. And I was sneaking in the house when this sweet voice yelled out and said, Woo, Bill, darling, put out the key cat and come on to bed. And I said, Woo. Surprise, my name's Fred. I went up to the next house and knocked on the bell. And this guy about 11 feet tall answered the door and said, what the? And I said, well, I was just sort of in the area and I thought maybe you'd like to chit-chat for a spell. 
but he threw me out the back door and called me some names. So I went to sleep in the next house I saw it looked about the same. I woke up this morning with my arms around the Great Dane. Some silly kid looking in the door yelling, Gravy Train. And I got into the wrong house again last night. <laughs> so I am glad I'm me. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, here's somebody that needs no introduction, but I'm going to introduce her anyhow. <laughs> My part-time lover, Boots Malone. Kill it, guys. <laughs> Well, now on Monday, I'm your darling. On Tuesday, I'm your baby. But on Wednesday, you don't get around to me. I don't want a part-time lover. Can't take a part-time lover. Won't have a part-time lover, no siree. I need your hugging. I need your kissing. It's your hugging and your kissing I've been missing. Now, if I'm not your one and only, I'd rather go on feeling comes my way I must refuse a part-time lover can't use a part-time lover gotta have a full-time lover every day I need your hugging need your hugging I need your kissing need your kissing it's your hugging and your kissing I've been missing now if I'm not you one and only I'd rather go on feeling lonely till the day the right one comes my way I must refuse a part-time Are you ready to cross one of these bridges with me? Okay, Red, kick it off. That's the one bridge I have never crossed. Everyone I ever loved, I always lost. For a true love, I'd gladly pay the cost. But that's the one bridge I have never crossed. All my life, traveled over the country I've even flown and sailed across the sea name a famous bridge I'll bet you that I've crossed it and all the women that I love have all crossed me that's the one bridge I have never crossed everyone I ever loved I always lost for a true love I'd gladly pay the cost but that's the one bridge I have never crossed. I've made a lot of money in my lifetime. I've got a million friends and I know some envy me. But nobody knows how bad I need affection and how I long to find a love that won't cross me. That's the one bridge I have never crossed. Everyone I ever loved I always lost. For a true love, I'd gladly pay the cost. But that's the one bridge I have never crossed. That's the one bridge I have never crossed. Everyone I ever loved, I always lost. For a true love, I'd gladly pay the cost. But that's the one bridge I have never crossed. Yes, that's the one bridge I have never crossed. True love, I gladly pay the cost, but that's the one. 